rust bust has gone through the ringer with this, and I mean that in a good way. When we're doing a project like this, we have a little bit of a dilemma. This is a good conversion, and we're trying to make it better. And by no means do we ever want to insult anyone. So I was trying to come up with an analogy because we do want to work with other conversions out there. So if there's a conversion that might be a little bit dated and there might be some great opportunities for improvement with our products, we want to hear from you. And there's a good chance we might want to work with you. This analogy that I came up with, I hope it makes sense. I grew up in New Jersey and during the week, go to school, go to work, play my sports. And then Friday night comes along. I, was, I couldn't be more excited about going uptown on Friday night to Joe's. Joe's is a pizza place and getting a slice of pie. Joe made great pie. So you get a slice, but you wanna make it epic. So you're gonna add something to it. For me, add a couple slices of pepperoni, a little garlic salt, a little crushed red pepper, and then I had something that was epic. This bus, to me, it's a slice of pie. Now with the AEM products added in, it's an epic conversion. But this list that I'm gonna rip through with you, we were gonna walk around and try to summarize all this, but I'm actually gonna run through these bullet by bullet. These features and functions, they didn't exist before because a product like the AEM VCU 200 didn't exist before. A programmable overall supervisor that ties everything together so it makes the whole conversion, drivability and everything like that just a little bit more fluid and like I said in our goal at the start was to make it more enjoyable. That being said, right now we have a accurate battery state of charge calculations as well as calculated battery power in kilowatts, pack state and health reporting, min and max cell voltages, min and max pack temp, pack CCL, DCL calculations, that's charge current limit and discharge current limit, pack consumption rate in kilowatts per mile, pack kilowatt hours remaining in range calculations, charge time calculations while charging, pack charge discharge current reporting, the AEM VCU is now managing, managing the cell balancing with our actual BMS that's installed. Automated charging control with 110 or 220 switching. Vehicle drive disability while charging for additional safety, meaning J plugs in, doesn't move. That's huge. Our keypads add it, so we have switchable performance modes. We have high voltage on, sort of the ignition on. We have the Prindle, so you know what gear you're in. Torque D rating based on pack temps, high or low. Pack voltage, pack state of charge, inverter temp, motor temp, and vehicle speed. Creep mode and hill hold have now been added. Throttle bounce has been filtered out, so you have better smoother transition, especially when you're bouncing down the road. Regen based on brake pressure and on throttle, based on throttle release, so you have like an engine decel, but it's actually regen. Dual channel throttle input, you have two sensor inputs into the VCU for added safety and redundancy. Brake pressure input to the brake switch for additional safety, meaning if there's no brake pressure, you can't drop it in gear, and if there is brake pressure, it, you can't use the throttle, so you get zero torque demand. The, C, the CD dash now installed in the center, like I'd mentioned, you get a ton of information, but highlights are automatic charging. So when you're plugged in with your J-plug, that lights up, give you the, the battery state of charge and where you are in the charge. GPS speed, pack state and health display, inverter state, health and display, performance mode selected, and also the drive mode selected, meaning park, neutral drive. So big indicators up top, none of that existed before. So that's the list. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? That's a long list. Okay, so now let's walk around and we'll check out the vehicle. So see all the products and where they're installed. We'll start at the back and then work our way to the front. In our last shot, looks very similar with the addition of our beautiful little VCU 200. So the VCU 200 now is the adult in the room. It's the supervisor and that's working with the SME inverter, our BMS, our keypad, our dash, and some of the contactor box and some of the other devices in here. So that is the new control. Everything's in one spot. Sam's with me. He's gonna go into some of the details of it. Almost all the features I just mentioned, they wouldn't exist without that. Next, battery packs. So the battery packs and the BMS. Not a lot has changed here outside of the addition of our BMS. There was nothing here before. It was a slow charge. We have two units. We have a master and a satellite, and they're able to monitor sticks. Because of the way this battery's laid out, we're able to monitor just sticks at a time. Uh, but we can make calculations with some math channels in the VCU and also up in the dash. So that's what this looks like right now. Again, aesthetically very, very similar, but in the back you'll see the two BMS units mounted. And we came up with a sort of a creative way to do this because we were trying to make it so they didn't disrupt the overall footprint of the, of the battery box itself. So what we wound up doing is, is actually boring a hole in the back of the box and then mounting the BMS unit because it's an embedded enclosure and it's waterproof to the box itself so the plug goes right through. So it's not exposed to elements and it's really, really rigid on the outside. So we don't have to worry about somebody knocking into it. And this actually could be one of my favorite areas. The display before was this piece. It's a nice little 52 millimeter piece and it gave you battery voltage. It gave you current push and pull based on regen on D-cell 
or your actual amperage consumption under acceleration gave you your percentage of the battery and also your total packed voltage. It did work, um, but the details weren't there and a lot of the other information I'm interested in seeing, and I know people like you are, now reside in the dash itself. So probably one of my favorite features is the use of our CD5 here. I mentioned in the previous video that we we're gonna mount it up in the center, which we did. Now we have a lot more information. Really easy to see. You can see what gear you're in, what mode you're in. You can see the push-pull of current consumption, the uh, actual calculated range left within the battery. So these are all things that I always wanna know. Just like you have a, on a, a regular internal combustion car where you have your mileage and instant fuel economy and then range till empty, now we have it up on our dash. The thing that I think is just really trick is that we figured out that when you plug in the J-plug, we can have the VCU wake up, which it has to do because it's working with the BMS. So it wakes up. So the system comes up and it shows you the charge, the state of charge, the time left to charge, and then we use the shift lights as the overall pack voltage. So you can just at a glance up inside the vehicle, see all of this information when it's plugged in. One of the last parts is the keypad. So before this vehicle and a lot of other vehicles that I've seen out there, just have some switches or knobs and such to get you in and out of gear and neutral, but it's not very, not very descriptive and you don't get a lot of feedback on what gear you're in and such. So now we've added our, our keypad. And when you turn the vehicle on with the wake switch, there's actually a high voltage button, or I say the ignition button, so the vehicle comes up to life in high voltage, and then you can just select your gear, and it is apparent where you are. Combined with that, the CAN keypad is feeding to the VCU, VCU is feeding up to the dash, and up in the dash, there's a big P for park, N for neutral, R for reverse, so there's never any guesswork. You don't have to think about what's happening. You just glance up, and it's telling you. And by the way, the CD7, CD5 dashes, used in motorsport, we use that for warnings all the time. As, as much as it is a dash to tell you how, wh how well things are working, it also tells you how bad things are going. Now I'm gonna ask Sam to join me and sort of walk through, starting at the back at the VCU with his laptop so you can see some of the things that we've added, like the creep mode and such, which we actually tuned in. He and I spent a bit of time cruising around the parking lot to get it so it holds just right on a hill, as compared to before where if you were sitting on a hill, it just rolled back. You didn't know if you were in gear or neutral. Now you know, so good stuff. Hey everyone, Sam here with AM Electronics. So let Kirk's talk about some of the improvements that we've made to take this vehicle from a great conversion to an epic conversion. And all that's done with our VCU being the adults in the room. So let's go a little bit into the AEM Cal software, which is what we've developed for interfacing with our VCU products. So communication with the VCU is done through CAN bus, and we recommend the Cavacer Leaf Light um, USB to CAN cable. So let's take a look at the AEM Cal software and what we've got going on with this setup. Here you can see the base, base motor torque tables. This defines the actual motor. Um, and I like to do a lot of analogies with ICE calibrating. This is kind of, I would say, more like your VE table of an engine. So it defines the torque that motor will make at any given RPM and at any given voltage. So when the VCU sees the battery voltage drops, it knows what kind of torque that motor is making. And then this is where you do your actual setup of how the vehicle drives is a pedal torque command table. So this defines how much torque you're gonna get at various pedal angles at different motor speeds. Just kind of like your drive by wire throttle angle, kind of similar to that, that's how I would compare it. And then within the VCU, there's actually a total of four tables that you can switch between and th that's where our performance modes are. One of the things we wanted to really improve on this build was how the vehicle drove because power is one thing, how fast it goes is one thing, but if it just doesn't drive right, it just feels whole, you know just not really good. The, the little things that just refine the vehicle, the VCU does a torque filtering and you can change how that, that filtering happens and you can change it at different motor speeds, different vehicle speeds. And what we did was allow the torque to not change too fast because some of you guys probably know an electric motor can deliver all that torque now. You just command it, you got it. That's one of the things that we had to do is you filter out that torque so that it doesn't come on so fast, go away so slow, and you won't get that back and forth jerking motion. The other thing that we wanted to do was hill hold or creep mode, because before when this vehicle was on a hill, you're letting off the brake, going onto the throttle, switching over, it would roll back kind of like a manual vehicle. Now we've made it more like an automatic vehicle where you could just let off the brake pedal and it'll creep forward for you. So if you're on a hill, it won't be rolling back. Um, so within the VCU software, there is a simple 2D table that defines how much torque that you're, you command when there's zero throttle input and the axis is vehicle speed. So we're, we're commanding a 70 Newton meter torque command at zero speed, and then it just tapers off by 10, 12 miles an hour or so, so that it will just get the vehicle going, but won't apply torque 
past a certain speed so you don't get a runaway vehicle. Keeps you kind of going somewhere around like five miles an hour. What you normally get with like a typical automatic vehicle in creep mode. So that's just a quick touch on the software. You know, I recommend you guys go out there, download the software. It's free. We don't charge anything for the software. There's some sample calibrations in there. Check it out. Let's move on to the battery and how we're doing some of the state of charge calculations and how we've improved on that. Some of you guys probably know that batteries Typically, voltages don't stay the same and they change with temperature. Prior, the battery state of charge was basically calculated off of the pack voltage. We're also taking into account the, the actual battery temperatures because as it fluctuates up or down, your, your battery voltage changes up or down. So you don't want to have a higher reported state of charge when the battery is warm or, or lower state of charge when the battery is cold. And all that information is coming in through the AEM BMS systems. It's reporting the battery's temperatures, individual cell voltages to the BMS. And the BMS is taking all this data in and calculating a state of charge based off of all this information from the BMS. This vehicle is equipped with chargers that are programmed for this vehicle specifically. So there's a specific car charging curve. So as the voltage comes up towards the maximum capacity of the battery, the current that the chargers deliver actually drops off to try to not overcharge the battery. With our VCU monitoring system, we can get away with just ramming the battery with as much charge current that charger can supply. And as it gets up near that, the limit, the VCU will watch it all, turn the charger off as it needs to. It'll let the voltage sink back down. As the charging current goes away, recheck it again. And if it needs to, it'll turn the charger back on. And it'll keep doing this until the battery is topped off. So this allows us to get to the maximum capacity in a shorter bit of time compared to ramping down that charging current as it gets close, because that last 10% can take hours, especially with a battery this big in this vehicle. So with this vehicle, there, there's actually two chargers on here. And prior to that, you had to manually decide whether you want to charge at 110 or 220 and do a couple things to make it work. With our setup here, you could basically 110, 220 is a simple switch. You just flip that switch. The vehicle would just automatically just work with either chargers right off the bat. We're getting ready to go for a ride. One of my favorite things to do on the CD5s and CD7s, this. Why is that so satisfying? I don't understand it. It's really kind of weird. Once we plug in, you're gonna see the keypad light up. That's letting you know that she's waking up. The VC is coming to life and actually talking to the VMSs, uh, or to the BMS unit. And then you'll see the dash come to life. So, hey Sam, let's plug in. So you watch the keypad. So now we know she's awake. We glance up to the dash, she's coming to life. We've got our cool little splash screen. And now you've got a regular screen, but just give it a little second to start calculating. And here we are, but that's weird, it's 10%. No, it's not. Pulling data, and then you'll see where we're at. So currently the battery's at 100%. Notice the shift lights, as I mentioned, that's showing your indicator all the way across, 120 volts. We've got the cool EV West logo up there and giving you all the information you need. Before we take off, I just wanna remind you how it was before. You hopped in the vehicle, you pulled this button, everything was awake and you were in drive. If you wanted to go in reverse, you pulled the white button. The way it's set up right now, I'm gonna pull the wake, I'm gonna hit the high voltage on or the ignition, and then you're gonna see the dash come up and you're gonna see the high voltage indicated up in the dash. So again, a couple of steps, boot it up, see we're in park. As I hit this, this green light actually comes on. So that's telling you that we are now up and running. If I don't have my foot on the brake, Sam wired in a, a zero to five off the, the brake pressure. So the VCU is looking for brake pressure. It's looking for voltage. So if I just sitting here hitting buttons, nothing's happening. It won't go into gear. Awesome safety feature. Now put some brake pressure on it. I want to back out. I hit reverse. It goes into reverse. Let's take it for a ride and we'll be able to share with you some of the improvements in the drivability. And like I said, hill hold and, and such. Okay, brake on, drive. And you see up in the dash, we got a nice big D. Now we're in drive right now. We go over to reverse, we have instant reverse, which is really nice. And then brake right to drive. You notice, remember we had that little shutter before, we even filtered that out. So we're gonna run around the block real quick during rush hour here in LA. Now we've got regen tied into the motor, regen tied into the brake. So it's kind of nice that I don't have to put a whole lot of brake pressure in here to start to get it to slow down a little bit for us. Kind of neat. Remember what I was talking about before with it being sprung so stiff and you know, by accident sort of stabbing the pedal. Now I'm still doing that, but you don't get the surge or the buckler anymore. It's substantially smoother to drive. It's really night and day. It is. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, it was, like I said, I don't want to take anything away from before. It was an, it was an awesome conversion, but it's definitely nicer to drive. So now we're in high range just to see how you hardly get any of that shutter that you got before. So I just wanted to test that. We were sitting on a hill. We're sitting at a light. I just wanted to see what kind of load it would take. 
and it was nice, nice and smooth right out of the hole. I can't wait to get this to Michael down at EV West and the guys down there and you know, get feedback from them. And hopefully, uh, and they'll appreciate the difference or the improvements that we've made. Sam's got the torque curve with the pedal, you know, the torque command by pedal dialed in real nice. I've just brought it up, you know, to a decent RPM and now I just off throttle a little bit. And you can feel the engine braking a little bit, which is kind of nice. Then you put some pedal pressure into it and you can feel a little bit of additional before there was no regen tied to the brake pedal. Um, so when you hit the brake pedal, it was all brake. Now we've got a little bit of the rear tire helping to slow the vehicle down. So we're almost wrapped up with our test loop right here. Everything that we wanted to get out of this so far, we've got out of it. Uh, smoother transition, the hill hold works really nice. The, the light acceleration works well without a shutter. The gear changes back and forth with no delays. Uh, regen on both brake and decel. So everything's working the way we planned. I couldn't be happier. So uh, I'm excited and I, like I said before, Hope the boys down at EV Wester is excited as well. So we'll pull in and then we'll give it a wrap. All right. So that is, as they say, a wrap. Well, hope you liked what you saw and you learned a little bit more about what our products can do to an existing EV conversion, never mind a new conversion. There is a follow up we're going to deliver down to Michael and the boys down at EV West. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, hit the like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And if you want to be in line for the next drop, hit the bell for your notifications. Take care.